I'm Rabbi Brian. I want to talk to you about a biblical conspiracy of the magnitude that will blow your mind. I'm Rabbi Brian Zachary Mayer. I help the spiritual but not religious. There's a chance that this spiritual thing might not be what you think it is. You get to choose who you are in this world, and that's enough, and that's awesome. The less you believe everything you think, the better. I'm ready, you're ready, let's dive in. I want to tell you about a conspiracy about the Bible. And it's something into which so many people have entered unwillingly. And I want to try to clear this up. Let me start with two images. One, the image of a dictionary. If I gave you a dictionary and I said, here, here are all the words, put them in order. You could tell so many different types of stories using that same dictionary. Or think of it as, as a, a series of photographs that you have on a, on a camera. You could select six photographs and depending on which six photographs you pick, it would tell a very different story of your vacation. The Bible's the same way. What stories are told about the Bible tell the story of the Bible. And I, and I believe most of the stories that we hear are the wrong ones. The second story I want to tell you is about uh, the statue by Michelangelo of David. This is a statue called King David and it is a giant statue. You know this image. It's David ripped, beautiful body, eight feet tall and it's completely wrong. We know from the biblical text that King David was the smallest, the scrawniest son of Jesse, and he had to be for the story of David and Goliath to make sense. For David to be muscular and a brute the same size as Goliath, this story doesn't work. But our image of David is stuck because of Michelangelo's sculpture, and that sculpture is not accidental. That sculpture was made by the Medici, was um, financed by the Medici family. The Medici family were, in effect, usurping the power from Rome of saying this is what the Bible is. This is the way to interpret it. And they were reinterpreting the Bible to have David be gigantic and huge. That's not David. That's not the story. And whoever controls the media controls the story. Listen to this story. And whoever controls the media controls the story. Think about this very common image you know. It's the image of Jesus on a cross suffering. Whoever controls the image, whoever controls the media controls the message. I recently read this book. It's called Saving Paradise, How Christianity Traded Love of This World for Crucifixion and Empire by Rita Nakashima Brock and Rebecca Ann Parker. This book opened my eyes to something I didn't know. In the year 970, 960, somewhere the 10th century in Germany, there's this image of Jesus on a cross, suffering. That is the first known image of Jesus to be on a cross. Up until that time, there are no iconic references to Jesus suffering on the cross. Think back to which photographs are the ones that you show. Showing the image of Jesus suffering on a cross is a choice that was made. I'll explain why in a moment, but first let me tell you what Jesus' imagery was up until then. All iconic references to Jesus were of Jesus next to the cross having been resurrected. All images were of Jesus off of the cross. There are no zero images of Jesus suffering on a cross until the 10th century. Christianity traded the love of this world for crucifixion and empire. Images of Jesus were that Jesus was resurrected 
in places where there were four streams representing that Jesus was represented, was resurrected in the Garden of Eden. That Jesus transcended death and came to life in the Garden of Eden. This is important. The idea of Christianity, the idea of having to be born anew, is not to be born anew in the next world. That's not going to happen until Pope Urban. That's the year 1000. To be born anew meant to be born anew in this world. That's the only thing that a baptism was. A baptism was a shedding off of this birthly, earthly uh, life and seeing that you had another life, that you were filled with a spirit, and that spirit is you being born anew. That's the message. Uh, Judaism has a mikvah, has a ritual bath. The idea of it is to cleanse yourself in this world. Baptism was never that you would get baptized so that you would inherit the world to come. Baptism, the bautista, the Greek word, is to be born again anew in this world. And for the first thousand years, this is what Christians were practicing, was how do I live my best life here and now? Jesus lived in an authoritarian regime. He lived when the people were being terrorized by Rome and Jesus preached the idea that the kingdom of God was in the here and now. The disciple said, when will the kingdom be here? And Jesus says, it is here now, you do not see it. The idea of being reborn in this world was so you could be reborn, so you could, you could live under such oppressive of such a such oppression to be able to fight against the perverse society in which you live takes active resistance and this is what Jesus's message was this is what the early rabbis message was was that we can stand up against this perverted society in which we live Krishnamurti is quoted to say, to be well adjusted to a profoundly sick society is no indication of health. That we need to stand up and have a moral fiber and a, a upright and to be able to look at this society and say, F you, I will not buy in that being more busy means that I'm better. I will not buy in that wealth means that I'm a better person. I will not buy in that my uh, ability with language, that people who don't speak as clearly as I am are therefore less intelligent. That's all bullshit. We need to, to find that we are able to stand up to this society and to, to re-see that it is our job to make this heaven on earth. This is heaven. My friend Martin Root wrote this wonderful book called Project Heaven on Earth. From our most profound core, we continue to know the kind of world we want. We want a world moving in a direction that nourishes and fulfills our deepest being. This is heaven on earth if we only see it. If we can only get our heads around it. If we can cleanse ourselves. Getting back to the Pope and the cross. Pope Urban had this idea that he wanted to unify the world for Christendom. But as for the first millennia, Christians were forbidden from spilling human blood. There's a problem. And the, 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 the workaround is if you can convince people that if they die in a suffering way, the way that Jesus died, then they would be reborn and they would get the world to come. The image of Jesus suffering on a cross is to make people feel bad 
and to feel that you can never live up to this standard. The image of Jesus on a cross does not exist until people make it an image. We are not here to suffer. I remember learning in grade school that Jews are the suffering servant of God. None of us are meant to suffer. For God to have any of us suffer would make God into a bastard. Any God I can understand is not a bastard. God does not delight in suffering. God delights in us finding that we are filled with spirit and that we can live and love and make ourselves and this world one of peace. If you enjoyed this, you will probably also enjoy a program that I co-produced with Progressive Christianity called This Rabbi on That Rabbi. It's me in six different modules of videos and audios talking about the true message of Jesus. I hope you enjoy those. Go to progressivechristianity.org, This Rabbi on That Rabbi. With love, I'm Rabbi Brian.